Hello, my name is Alex and welcome to TechFlow. Now, when I use the term 5G, the majority of you sat there at home or wherever you are will think of the next generation of wireless, more specifically involving mobile phones. This week, I had the awesome opportunity to go down to London and visit the 5G Huawei Innovation Center to actually see what 5G is all about, to see its use cases, to see its health risks or none, and to see how it's gonna be used in the real world and chat with, well, the experts that are there about 5G. This is gonna be super interesting. Now, I find 5G, or the next generation of mobile wireless, really, really interesting because it's pushing the industry forward in numerous different ways as to which you guys are gonna find out in this video. Now, in general, I find the next generation, the next wave of mobile wireless, 5G, really, really interesting. So I took down my camera and a microphone to the Huawei 5G Innovation Center, and this is what I managed to capture. Hope you enjoy. So this room that I'm in right now is kind of the hub of 5G here in the UK. Everything that you need to know about 5G is going to be in this room somewhere. It's a really cool room and I'm going to try my best to take you around it in this video and hopefully teach you a few things about 5G that I've learned throughout my last half an hour of being in here because I've learned quite a few things. It's really quite interesting. So let's start. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about numerous things. Why 5G is good, what it can be used for, its actual speed benefits, and if it is actually faster, and we'll show you guys a couple of tests. But first off, I wanna show you how you can actually get 5G into your life. So obviously, while well, you've got a smartphone in your pocket, there's some phones here from Huawei, which are all 5G enabled, which is absolutely fine, but 5G is really, really fast. You can actually use it for home broadband. So this is a CPE, that stands for Customer Premises Equipment. This sits on the outside of your house and it can pick up a 5G signal and then via an Ethernet cable, take it in and you've got your Wi-Fi all via 5G. And they also make base stations as to which you can keep in your backpack and these will give off a Wi-Fi network with a 5G backhaul or you could plug into them directly. And I'll go more into why you'd want to plug into one of these directly later on in the video because it's really, really useful for things like TV and broadcasting. Okay, so first off, I'm going to run two speed tests on these phones down here. Now, one of them is 4G and one of them is 5G. Now, there's two things that you can actually know three things that you're going to want to take note of there's the ping there's the upload and the download so on here this is actually a blown up image of both of the phones so as you can see on 4g we've got a ping of 28 42 down and 25 up and over here on the 5g we've got a 10 ping 1130 download and 118 upload now the ping essentially is a number a digit as to how many times a piece of information is sent from you like the phone back and forth between the server until it's 100% correct. So lower is better. As you can see, 10 ping on 5G versus 28 on the 4G. It's so much better on 5G, so much more responsive. And here is actually a download of a one gig file. As you can see here, it's taking about eight seconds on the 5G and three minutes on the 4G. Now obviously I'm not going to do a video about 5G without talking about this. Now this is a wall that essentially says 5G is okay. Now let me explain what's going on. People, well in the news have said that 5G isn't the best because it's going to emit lots of radiation and therefore everybody got really scared and they were like, oh my god we don't want 5G because there's going to be loads of radiation and radiation is bad. But actually if you take a look at this, modern household items like your laptop, a Wi-Fi router, a smartphone, your smartphone is emitting eight milliwatts of radiation. Now the example is as shows, there's an antenna up here, a 5G one, but by the time you or I are 40 meters away from the antenna, you're gonna be exposed to about 0.2 milliwatts of radiation. Now a smartphone over here is emitting around eight watts. So as you can see, the smartphone is a hell of a lot more than the actual 5G signal that you're worried about. And actually your Wi-Fi router in your home is emitting around six milliwatts and you don't see people people going mardy about that, do you?
Now I've tried to answer a question myself here and that's what's the point in 5G when your 4G is kind of good enough. I've got 4G on my phone right now and I could load up my YouTube videos, I could download my games and to be honest with you, everything would be fine. But you see here, well we've actually got a 4K football stream here that's being streamed at 57 megabits per second. Now that just wouldn't happen on 4G. And now there's a screen up here that's got a load of jargon on it, but I'll essentially try and explain what it's saying. Let's say you're a broadcast company and you're trying to get a broadcast back to your main data center, a live video feed, possibly in 1080p or even 4K. Now, if you've got fiber, that's absolutely fine. What are the other options? Well, you've got satellite, that's only gonna carry around 10 megabits per second, so you can scrap off your 1080p, never mind 4K. We've got 4G, you might just be able to squeeze out a 1080p stream with 4G that is live, However, if you're wanting a full-on 4K stream, you're definitely gonna need to utilize 5G. And we saw that not just in the download, but the upload speeds of 5G are significantly improved over the legacy 4G, which helps with, well, exactly this, live upstream, live broadcast. So whether you guys knew this or not, and you can take your phone out of your pocket, do a speed test on 4G right now, the average latency is between 20 and 40 milliseconds. So like we've already discussed, to send a quick text message to load some games or play a YouTube video or stream your Netflix, that's absolutely fine. But what if, well, you're trying to remotely control a robot. So this is a robot right here. Now they've actually got a demo up here where it was running on 4G. They give the robot a push and it actually falls over because the latency, well, it's too great. Here, we have a small latency on 5G, around two milliseconds. So they can mess around with the robot and because the latency is that short, it stays upright, it's working. So Alex, I hear what you're saying. That's all well and great, but I don't own a robot or a crane that I want to control miles away. What does this mean for me? What does 5G actually mean for me? And how is it going to help me? Well, obviously 5G is still an infant technology. We are still trying to get better at it, but this, you have a VR headset that's connected via 5G. So you have no cables here whatsoever. And actually the computer, all the processing power that's running this VR experience isn't even in this room. It's actually in a data center somewhere miles away from here. But because we're connected via 5G, we've got the low latency, we've got the bandwidth, and this will work. And this does work if I put it on my head. I can't really demonstrate that to you, but it works really, really well. We've got one of these shadow computers here. Now, if you don't know what shadow are, I've done videos on these guys in the past, but they're essentially a cloud computing company. So there's a computer running on here, but it's not, it's actually in the cloud. So you need an internet connection. Now this shadow PC is actually connected to this here, 5G Huawei router, and this has got a 5G signal, which is obviously connected to the internet. So essentially we have a full on gaming experience running over 5G and it's fine. This is actually a 5G antenna, which would usually be mounted and turned on on top of a building. Luckily enough for me, it's right next to me and turned off. This thing is absolutely huge. I have no idea what's going on inside of here. Hopefully lots and lots of data packets are flying around. So it's really awesome to see how Huawei are actually paving the way with all of this 5G stuff. Now there's a backpack right here. And as you guys can see, it's got one of these Huawei 5G receivers in with an ethernet port in the back. Now, if we dig deeper into this backpack, there's actually what we call a transcoder, which has an ethernet port and an HDMI port. So the HDMI port would go to your camera, the ethernet port would plug into this, all of this lives into your backpack and you've got one cable go into your camera and then you could literally be in town or wherever you are live broadcasting 4K from your camera using the 5G network because we've got that greater upload speed than 4G and it is significantly increased too. I think the main thing for especially me and humanity in general is that we don't need to worry about 5G having health implications on us. The demonstration that they gave there, which essentially portrayed that you are not gonna be stood anywhere near a 5G base station that could harm you. You're gonna be around 40 to 50 meters away from it and the radiation at this distance is, well, much less than per se a typical Wi-Fi router that's sat in your home giving off your Wi-Fi. And it's also nice to know that 5G isn't just a typical marketing term for 
just general faster speeds. And moving on from that as well, the actual use cases of 5G are completely amplified because of its capabilities. Not only is it just mobile data for your mobile phone, but in five to six years time, when all of our cars on the road are connected, they'll probably be using 5G to do so because it can handle more devices connected with a bigger throughput and lower latency. With a demonstration like the robot, Smart cars are the same thing. They'll need really, really low latency to make quick decisions and tell other cars, maybe three or four cars back, hang on a second, there's a crash up here, you need to slow down. I think what visiting the 5G center really taught me personally was that 5G is much more than just your data plan. 5G is helping towards lots of different things like a smart connected future, it's gonna help with your deliveries, it's gonna help with your smart cars, it's gonna help with pretty much everything in places that you wouldn't even expect it. And I think that is what I took away from the entire experience at the weekend. So with that being said, it would be absolutely awesome to hear what you think down in the comments below about 5G and the future of it. Do you still like it or not? Do you think it's something we necessarily need to push forward as a technologically advanced humanity or not? Let us know down in the comment section below. And if you like our tech videos on here, please, feel free to click that subscribe button and click the bell icon too to be notified and be the first to watch our uploads. But for now, well, my name's been Alex, you've been watching Techflow, and we'll see you in the next one. Adios.